Hello, this is Dr. David A. Gatros, Department of Computer Science at Florida State University, and I'd like to welcome you to my undergraduate lecture series on selected topics in computer science. You can find these videos and others at my YouTube channel at the URL listed below, or you can simply go to YouTube and search using Gatros and FSU as keywords. Now on to the lecture. CDA 3100, Computer Organization Introduction Part 1. Um, original slides by Dr. David Wally, modified by myself, Dr. Dave D Gatros. Today's topic, we're going to go over uh, classes of computers, great architecture ideas, software levels, and computer components. The uh, remaining we'll do in another video. So the types of co uh, computers, or the classes of computers, and this varies uh, a lot, and it changes over the years. For instance, uh, personal computers at one time, PCs, were actually referred to as IBM compatibles, or Microsoft machines. Macs, on the other hand, or Apple computers were separate. Now they're all considered the same. Intended for a single user at a stationary location, usually comprised of notebooks, workstations, towers, uh, emphasis is on good performance for a single user at a low cost. Servers uh, assessed by computers to provide com computation or data requirements typically only accessed via a network. Uh, they have great computing capacity, a large amount of storage, a very, very good uh, high out I.O. Out capacity. Uh, the emphasis here is on performing well under large workloads with enhanced dependability and redundancy. Embedded computers uh, are computers contained in other devices, which is becoming a real trend in the industry. Usually a small number of predetermined applications, limited functionality. The emphasis is here is on cost and low power consumption and efficiency. Personal mobile devices, your smartphones, battery powered wireless devices uh, with multimedia uh, user interfaces. Um, usually included uh, in this are uh, smartphones and tablets, uh, reliances on touch screens, emphasis on cost and energy efficiencies. And the last one we have is large uh, cluster warehouse scale computers, um, usually comprised of a collection of servers connected to a network to act as a single powerful computer, so you don't know which server you're actually looking at. Um, supercomputers are probably also contained in this category, although many places will actually put them in a category by themselves. Emphasis is on scalability and availability handled through the network. Now we're going to talk about great architecture ideas. I'll ask you to remember these. Design for Moore's Law. Moore's Law says that the number of transistors in a chip doubles every 18 to 24 months. We'll talk about this in subsequent lectures, but this is beginning to slow down a little bit. The idea here is that uh, when you design something you have to anticipate the change in technology or the advances in technology in your design. Number two is use abstraction to simplify design and layer it. Abstractions used to represent different levels of the design. Lower levels can, uh, details can be hidden to provide simpler models and to allow for modification. Number three, make the common case fast. Think of improving a for loop as an example here. What you do is you identify the common case, the one that uh, is done over and over again, and you try to make it efficient. And it a lot of times is the most cost efficient method to obtain improvements. Improve performance of your parallelism, multiple CPUs, think of that. Um, and there are many versions or levels of parallelism. Improve performance via pipelining. Similar to parallelism, what we try to do is we try to line up things and stack them and get them ready to go. It break tasks into stages so that multiple tasks can be done simultaneously, performed in different stages, and commonly used to improve instruction throughput. Commonly also used in, in conjunction with parallelism. Improve performance via prediction. Sometimes faster to assume a particular result rather than waiting until the results is known, especially um, if it's a, it's a very, very common result. Using hierarchy of memories, um, make the fastest, smallest, most expensive bit per memory the first level access and the slowest, largest, and cheapest bit uh, the layered, later access. 
think of using cache memory inside the CPU as the smallest, fastest, most expensive, and disk drives, hard drives, tape drives as the uh, slowest. Improve dependability, dependability via redundancy. Include redundant components. Um, embedded systems, flight control systems, medical systems, banking systems also use this to improve uh, um, not only efficiency but improve reliability. Computers are divided into layers. Um, usually we associate this with three layers. There's the hardware layer, the system layer, and the application layer. You must communicate through the system software to get to the hardware. Um, it would be virtually impossible to do it any other way. Too complex. There are different program levels. We talk about high level languages like C, C++, Java, uh, Ada assembly language which is the symbolic representation of the machine code and then the machine code itself which is what the machine needs to actually execute the instruction. Translating between the different levels we have the compiler that translates the high level language into an assembly language file and we have the assembly language file translated by the assembler into machine language and finally the linker takes the machine language and adjusts the addresses in it so it can actually be used on the machine itself. This is just an example of translating a C program to a machine code. What's inside a computer? Well, this is an oversimplification of it, I assure you. There's the processor, the memory systems, and the input and output devices. The processor actually has two parts, the data path and the control path. Memory systems actually are comprised of many different types of memory systems inside the computer, but they're all lumped into one category in this, uh, in this lecture. This is uh, just a picture from the uh, textbook, believe it or not, that, of uh, what a computer looks like on the inside. And we'll talk more about control path and data path and memories and processors later on in the course. The instruction set architecture, ISA, is the uh, programmer visible instructions uh, that uh, allow you to access the computers. It's divided into three things, four things actually. Operations, the arithmetic logic, transfer, control, floating point operations, the data types and sizes. Most processors have 8, 16, 32, and 64 bit instructions. There are machines that have different sizes. They are rare, they're not used very often. There's the different addressing modes the constants um, for uh, specific uh, non changing numbers that also used to represent absolute addresses inside the machine registers that hold values and uh, different ways to access memory including a combination of using constants and registers. Encoding references how the instructions are um, broken apart and used by the machine itself. The instruction set architecture enables the development of many hardware implementations at a variety of costs and we're going to talk about one in this class called the RISC architecture. The application binary interface includes the instruction set architecture and the operating systems that is put on top of the machine itself. Memory is divided into volatile and non-volatile. Volatile memory, when you take um, uh, power away from it, the data goes away. And non-volatile memory, uh, when you take power away, it maintains it. In non-volatile, that includes not only magnetic disks, but also the flash memory on your mobile devices. Input and output devices uh, you know about. Uh, output devices, uh, for examples, include monitors, printers, speakers. Uh, secondary storage um, in uh, uh, like uh, disks and flash memory are also considered I.O. devices. Most computers today now use network connections, different from about 30 and 40 years ago. We use a couple of terms uh, to reference this. LAN, local area network, um, is a term used to describe networks that are um, usually connected by Ethernet. LAN is usually associated with a network that's administered by a single entity. Uh, they can be connected via switches and routers. Wide area networks usually are comprised of multiple LANs that communicate with each other. Most uh, mobile devices, servers, and PCs today are connected to the network in some way or another. Now the last thing on this slide is the uh, steps for executing a program. The first two are initially done. You input uh, the machine code from the memory. Uh, 
the machine code is stored in the local memory of the CPU itself. Then the next four operations are done over and over again. The processor fetches the instruction, it decodes it, it executes it, stores the results, and then goes back to step three. And steps three through four and five and six are done over and over again. It's the four cycles of a machine code. And we'll talk about this later on in the class. Go over this set of slides as many times as you need to. And when you're done, go on to uh, part two of the introduction.